what God expects from his sheep here at the Greater Ebenezer New Revival Tree of Life Institutional Double Rock on the side of the road to Jericho Missionary Baptist Church of Zion. And I say Mount Calvary, y'all don't tell me. Shalom. Today we're going to deal with For God So Loved the World. John 3.16 for dummies. I saw another brother wrote that, and that was a good title he had. John 3.16 for dummies. Okay? Meaning, makes it spell, we're going to make it, we're going to spell it out very easy for you. Let's read John 3.16. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now let's find out who is Christ talking to. Start at verse 1. John chapter 3, verse 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. So Christ is talking to a ruler of the Jews. You know what? That's very important for this whole chapter. Because some of you get to John 3, 16, and immediately, everybody, he loves all races. But it tells you in the first verse, he's talking to a ruler of the Jews. Jump down to verse 14. I want to start two verses above verse 16. Verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. So wait a minute. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. What is Christ referencing there? History. You've got to know history from verse 14 to understand when you get down to 16. Let's read the history on that. Go to Numbers chapter 21, verse 6 through 9. Numbers 21, verse Numbers 6. chapter 21, verse 6. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people. Meaning poisonous snakes. That's what fire, fiery serpents mean. Poisonous snakes. And they bit the people. And much of Israel died. Much of Israel died. You know why that's important? Because you always got those Yeshuaite Christians out there to talk about. Well, there was a mixed multitude. All nations, my brother. Shut up. And much people, what? And the Lord sent fiery serpents amongst the people. And they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Much people of Israel, Israel, Israel died. Come on. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent and set it upon a pole. Get, make you a symbol of a poisonous snake. And put it on a, on a staff of brass. Read it again. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole. And it shall come to pass, that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So he said, All the Israelites that look at that symbol, when he looks at it, shall live. That's the symbol of the medical profession on the side of the ambulances. You see a symbol of a poisonous snake on a, on a staff. Okay, so that's the history Christ has given. Let's go back to John 3, 14 now. Now we're getting some understanding here. Okay. John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Even so means the same way, or likewise, must the Son of Man be lifted up. So the question is, who did Moses lift up that symbol of the serpent in the wilderness to? Did he lift it up to all races on the earth? Or was it to the children of Israel who had gotten bit and died? It was to Israel who got bit and died. Read that again. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so Here must comes, the Son of Man be lifted up. Wait, wait. Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. To who? To much of Israel. Much people of Israel. Come on. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. See, now, you know what confuses the mind of a Negro? The word whosoever. Because you understand, now you understand verse 14. But you'll get down to verse 15 and go, But my brother, it says whosoever. Now you're all confused. Give me Acts 2, please. Acts 2 and verse 21 and 22. The Bible explains the whosoever for itself. It don't need your pastor to do it. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. Come on. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. So who's being spoken to? Ye men of Israel, hear these words. 
whosoever is ye men of Israel. Read it again and together. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. You hear the scriptures explaining itself. He's the whosoever is amongst the Israelites. Okay, let's go back to John 3 now. Verse 15 again. John chapter 3, verse 15. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Come on. For God so loved the world. For God so loved. I want to stop, stop right there with that loved. Does God love all races on earth? Can you find me a scripture where God says, I love the Philistines, I love the Edomites, I love the Moabites, I love the Jebusites and Hittites, or the Ishmaelites. Do you find any scriptures like that in the Bible? No. You know what you do? You find the word love and, and try to squeeze all races into it, but you're going to understand now that the Bible is the book of the Israelites. Get me Deuteronomy chapter 7. I want verse 6 and 7 to explain the love. Who does God love? Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. For thou art in holy people unto the Lord thy God. So the Israelites are a holy people unto the Lord our God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So the Israelites are a special people unto himself. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people on the planet earth. Go ahead. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you, wait, of the Lord. Wait, 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 wait. He got that word love there. The Lord did not set his love upon the Israelites because what? Nor choose you because you were more in number than any people. If we weren't the most numerous nation, go ahead. For you are the fewest of all people. We were the smallest nation at this time, come on. But because the Lord loved you. But because the Lord loved you, Israelites. Loved you, loved you, Israelites. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. You see that? Hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen. Read that verse again. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out of a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of the Pharaoh king of Egypt. You see that? The Lord loved the Israelites. Now, Romans 9, 13. Romans chapter 9, 13 about this love. Let's see if it changed during the time of Christ. Romans chapter 9, verse 13. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So who does God love? Jacob. Jacob became the Israelites. Okay? So there's nothing changing here. Let's go back to John 3 and 16 again. Hmm. Okay, what you, you know what you need? I'm going to show you what you need. Read John 3, 16 again. John chapter 3. And verse 16. Verse 16. For God so loved the world. Stop. For God so loved the world. You understand now that that love was only for the Israelites. We went from Old Testament to New Testament. Now you know what your problem is, Mr. Black man, Mr. Black woman, Miss Black woman? The word world. And you know what the black man and black woman hate to do? Read. Get a dictionary. Do yourself a favor. Get a dictionary and look up the word world. Okay, one of the many meanings of the word world, it means a people having common interests or goals. A society of people having common interests and goals. That's what the word world means, okay? Like you got the sports world, the animal world, the world of the Greeks, the world of the Chinese, okay? There's many, the fish world, okay? There's many types of meanings for the word world. So now read John 3, 16 again. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world. So now, what does that world translate to? Because you, in your lying Christian church, says, all races, everybody. But let's let the Bible interpret itself. Give me Isaiah 45, verse 17. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. What? World without end. What? World without end. The Israelites are the world. The Israelites are the world. Is the world. Here's another one. John 18 and 20. John 18 verse 20. 
John chapter 18, verse 20. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I spoke openly to the world. I ever taught in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort. Whether the Jews always resort. So who's the world Christ spoke openly to? The world of the Jews. Go back to John 3, 16. Now, now we understand what this is saying. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world, the world that of he Israel. gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, yeah, whosoever of the Israelites believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now I hope you got some understanding on that. Shalom.